Hello friends, since I created my original 360 degree project, I've had a number of people approach me and say, well, how did you do that? And so what I want to do is in this video, just outline some of the steps that I took to create the project. The areas I'm going to cover are, well, why use 360 degree films? And what are the principles behind the recording approach that I took? Why should the films be embedded into an effective learning design? And what camera, editing software and headsets should I use to deliver the final outputs? And what important tips can I offer from my experiences of creating 360 degree film projects to disseminate research findings? So why use 360 degree films? Well, if you've published research where things like tone, atmosphere, body language and those elements that are difficult to put across from the written page are important, then basically what you should do is, is consider using an immersive medium. Before jumping out and creating 360 degree films, it's important that you're able to justify your reasons for using this medium. There's a great book by Jeremy Balenson who points out that using immersive media like 360 degree films creates a powerful sense of presence for those who put the headsets on. And the book is called Experience On Demand. I've put the link to this book in the section below if you want to access it. I, I would encourage you to read it before jumping into any 360 degree film development. The main reason I chose using 360 degree films was because I wanted to take my learner on a journey with me as a researcher and my colleague as a social worker so that they could follow us and see what a child protection visit is like, the different elements involved in the child protection process, and also begin to not only understand and observe, but also experience what our research demonstrated led to good relationship-based practice and not so good relationship-based practice. It was the ability to convey mood, atmosphere, and all of those elements that are sometimes really, really difficult to get across with the written word that I wanted to convey. And this was the main reason that we used 360 degree videos. So coming up with the idea of using 360 degree videos was the easy part. The difficult bit was actually putting it into practice. And so what were the principles that I used behind the recording approach? To have an impact, the scenes had to feel real. So what we did was we recruited real social workers to play the role of not only the social worker, but also the family members as well. And what this allowed us to do was take the learning from the research and help us to co-produce a set of storylines that enabled us to, in an authentic way, deliver the research messages through storytelling. Having a static camera position for the 360 degree view wasn't really a good possibility because what we wanted to do was demonstrate the importance of movement in social work practice. And so I had to think really hard about this. And then one day this idea just popped into my head. I thought, well, why don't I play the role of the researcher? And what this did was it allowed me to carry the camera. So I was able to make sure that the filming was done in the correct way, but also allowed me to accompany the social worker and pose questions to them prior to the visit. So, you know, I might ask them questions about, well, how are you feeling? What's going on? And this allowed us to get into the head of the social worker and basically tell the audience some of the stories that the social workers told us during the research project. And also after the visit, I was able to follow the social worker back to their car, for example, where they were able to immediately reflect on what went well and what potentially could have gone better. Another element in terms of the filming philosophy was that we created a fictional family. The social worker followed this fictional family for 11 months, and this was very similar to the research project where we followed some families for 12 months. And what this allowed the trainees to do was see the interactions of the social worker with this family for a long period of time. And what this allowed us to do was embed the learning messages, the research messages into the different segments of the films. And one of the really great ideas that we came out with was creating an enabler and a barrier version. The barrier version demonstrated those elements that didn't lead to relationship-based practices. The enabler versions of the, exactly the same scenes allowed the trainees to see those subtle differences that led to good and effective 
relationship-based practice in child protection. So using a family, using a period of 11 months, allowed us to effectively deliver our research messages. And this was important part of the storytelling that led to the authentic feel in terms of the learning that the trainees undertook. One of the questions I get asked is, is, well, why did you put the films into a learning design? Why didn't you just offer them on their own? Our experience demonstrated that to have good impact and the ability to relay our research messages effectively in the training package, we had to offer the learners the opportunity to think and reflect on the messages that they took on board and how they would implement those into their own practice. So the learning design is experiential in nature and encourages a good deal of reflection and thinking on the part of the trainee. And we drew on the theories of Kolb and Albert Bandura's social learning and social cognitive theories to help influence the shape of the design. We've got seven modules and those modules are basically contained within a set of seven PowerPoints. So anybody who's interested in using these as a trainer would simply be able to pick up the PowerPoints. And because they're consistent in design, they're able to structure the learning based on the activities within the PowerPoint itself. Our evaluation showed that using the 360 degree films as triggers for discussion and debate actually encouraged the learners to make links between the research messages and their application into practice. So what camera, editing software and headsets did I use? Well, uh, to film, I use this really great 360 degree camera. It's a GoPro Fusion and I've put a link to the camera in the section below, but it records beautiful video very, very clearly and the audio is great in this little thing as well. The software I use to edit the 360 degree films is Final Cut Pro and I used a MacBook Pro M1 13 inch laptop computer to edit the films. The headsets that I use to deliver the films and the training are these Class VR 64 gigabyte premium headsets. They're excellent headsets, they provide a really good immersive experience. The image quality is great and the audio is very good as well and it's really quite easy to get the films onto these headsets. So what tips can I give you from my experiences of creating 360 degree film projects to deliver research? The first is have a very good reason for using immersive media. Using 360 degree films was appropriate for our research project because what we wanted to do was transport our learners into what we witnessed in the research field. And so we were able to use 360 degree films to convey our research messages by demonstrating tone, atmosphere, body language, and all of those elements that we knew led to good relationship-based practice and those elements that didn't lead to good relationship-based practice in child protection. And so this way, what the learner was able to do in a safe environment was take these messages away and apply them into their own practice. When creating a 360 degree project like this, be clear about the research messages that you want to convey. When you create the films, make sure you do so in a way that they act as triggers so they can be part of a good learning design that enables discussion, debate and reflection so that people are clear about the learning that they want to put into practice in their own fields. My final tip is just go out and do it. Get a camera, start filming, put it onto a headset, try it out in a pilot project with some people, look at what works and what doesn't for your own field and just do it. Honestly, it's not that difficult to do. I'll be creating more videos that go into much, much more detail about each of the areas that I've covered here. So please do subscribe and keep an eye out on this channel. I'll add a new set of videos here and if you want to learn a little bit more about the research project that this video is based upon, have a look here and it'll take you to that video. I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.